Okay, so a little bit on uh, tax stuff I have to talk about so I can introduce some of these other things that you do for, for children, right? So estate tax, uh, right now the federal estate tax limit is $5.43 million. So if you have a couple, you've got $10.86 million before you pay an estate tax. If you have less than that, no tax. If you have more than that, it's a 40% tax rate, right? You can give an unlimited amount to your spouse. So if you have $10 billion, you can give it all to your spouse, no tax. But then if your spouse doesn't get remarried to somebody younger, then they're going to pay a tax when they die, right? So not many people pay an estate tax these days uh, because the limit is so high at this point. It's set to go up a little bit with inflation each year. So it was 10.34 million last year. This year it's 10.43 million. So again, not a lot of people have to pay that. Um, what's included in the taxable estate? Now this is a little catch, right? So all the stuff you own uh, at your death is included. That makes sense. You know, my bank account, my car, or whatever was in my name. But for tax purposes, they also look at the value of your life insurance the jointly owned property, the house you and your spouse own, even if your spouse gets the whole thing automatically on your death, they're going to consider half the value of that for tax purposes. Uh, your retirement accounts, anything you have a power of appointment over, the ability to direct where it goes, uh, annuities that you might own. So your taxable estate might be a lot larger than the cash value of what you have now if you cashed everything out. Uh, I've got a lot of life insurance with four little kids, and so does my wife, and if something happened to both of us, uh, and you sold all of our other stuff, we, you know, we'd be getting closer to that estate tax limit, right? So if you've got a lot of life insurance or a lot of other assets, then the state tax can be a consideration. The other thing is if you do move to D.C. or Maryland, they have their own state estate taxes. Maryland is in the process of phasing theirs out, um, but D.C.'s is still 16% on anything over a million dollars. So I've got clients in D.C. who go, wow, we have a house and a retirement account, and all of a sudden that's more than a million dollars, and, and that can be a big uh, a bite out of their estate. Virginia is a little more friendly than all those places, which is probably why you're all living here in Virginia. Okay. So gift tax, now if you thought about it, if there was no gift tax, then everybody would just give away all their stuff shortly before they die, assuming you know when you're going to die, so that you don't have to pay an estate tax, right? So the gift tax backstops the estate tax system. And basically, you have a limit on what you can give without having a tax that's incurred. So there's a unified credit. This $5.43 million that we talked about is a unified credit between estate tax and gift tax. And so if you make a large gift during your lifetime, then you can either pay the tax now or you can have that charged against your estate. So uh, let's say you have a parent and they've got a bunch of assets. They're thinking, well, we might have an estate tax or we live in a state where there's a state tax or whatever the case might be. So we're going to give you kids uh, this rental property that we have. It's a $500,000 townhouse. We're going to give it to you now, assuming that it's going to go up in value later. So we'd rather give it to you now at 500000 then keep it in our estate and have it be worth $2 million when we die, right? So that might be a logical thing. The parent would make a gift now, and they could either pay the tax, the 40% on that gift, $500,000, or they could say, just deduct it from my $5.43 million that I can have tax-free at my death, right? So again, that unified credit, you get the whole thing to use up sometime during your lifetime. Um, but every year, you can give up to $14,000 per year to any beneficiary. So I can give $14,000 to everybody in this room if I had it, uh, and I can do that every year. And my spouse could do the same thing. Uh, now, you, that you start thinking about that with kids, and, okay, well, I'm going to put some money in a college savings account for my kid. Well, if you put more than $14,000 a year in that college savings account, then you've made a taxable gift, and you either have to charge it against your lifetime credit or you have to uh, pay the tax now, right? Now, you and your spouse could give each kid $28,000 a year. You could combine gifts between spouses. Uh, and there's a specific rule for college savings plans that allows you to make one gift and treat it as if you spread it over five years. 